Hey YouTube and thank you for watching Junkworks Garage. Well, as you can see, I'm sitting by where my uh, pinion area should be um, and doing that job right now. Now here's the deal. Um, usually I put my long version of my videos up first and then do the shorter version uh, later on. But, I'll be honest with you, this is my first time kind of doing the setup on one of these things and it's it's been a bugger. Um, although I know a decent amount about mechanics and I know how it should work and why it should work and all those kind of things, um, even guys that are good at this stuff have troubles with it and uh, it's definitely taken me longer to figure out uh, how to make this work than normal. So it's definitely been a bit of a, a brain teaser for me, we'll put it that way. Um, so in that aspect, this video is just going to be kind of what it takes to do the job. Uh, for those of you that don't want to, you know, figure out the trials and tribulations I've been through. 270. Two. Um, but for those of you that really have never done this before or even if you have a decent knowledge of mechanics and, and think you're going to be able to just pull this thing out of here and do it uh, without first of all buying some special tools and uh, second of all maybe even understanding more uh, it's, it's going to be difficult for you. Uh, a lot of people say these 14 bolts are so easy which led me to tackle this and uh, it's been harder than I thought. So therefore, yet again, I'm going to have a good, bad, and ugly video of this. Um, for those of you that want to just enjoy watching me suffer, do uh, and go watch that one, as well as those of you that might want to learn, you know, things that you just want to avoid, things that you may need to buy, research that you're going to need to do, because quite honestly, there is a million different ways to skin a cat and do a 14 bolt according to everybody out there so there's a lot of i don't know if i'd call it misinformation but there is a lot of differing information on how to do this it's because these seem to have different tolerances a, a very wide array of tolerances that it will be okay with so um there's everything from people saying well if you're driving it on the street you gotta do this 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 and this that's kind of where I'm trying to get to, but quite honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that myself. But there are a lot of guys that are doing, I don't know about King of the Hammers, but those kind of things with 14 bolts that are set up in by the book incorrectly. So uh, there you go. Now you know I'm going to do my best to set this up. And in this video, it's going to be my best to do it the correct way. Um, but yet again... I am not responsible if you do anything I do. If you don't like the way I'm doing something, don't do it. And you need to definitely do your own research, not just watch my video. All right, with no further ado, let's get to it. But first, you need to empty out the fluids in your differential. So yet again, if you need to know how to do that, go check that video out. So we're starting with a 5 8 I got that right there. And I'm going to see if I can get it by hand first. If not, I may have to go to my impact, but we'll see. And uh, I don't know if there's a specific way in to do this, but... Alright, came loose. Ow, I hit my elbow. Now I'm going to go directly across from that one. I'm going to pop these loose just kind of in... Uh, star pattern all these are all the same size this one has a longer one in it just for your information and quite honestly before I go any further and knock a bunch of crap down inside these holes I am going to actually put this back in a little bit here just to keep the crap out of the holes yet again and uh, I'm going to clean this up better before I pop this off of here just to just to keep as much crud out as I can. All right. So now there's some shims and things like that behind here that we got to pay attention to and make sure they get back where they need to go. 
and hopefully this will pop off. I think it's going to be a little heavy, so we got to be kind of careful. I'm going to As you can see, I kind of put this together with my cheater bar here, and I got my big knocker tool. Um, these are not that expensive, and they really come in handy in a lot of places. Now, I've also marked this so when it comes loose, I'll remember how to get it back together. And we're going to try it. This is uh, hard either. It looks like she's trying. Well, this is apparently going to be much harder than I first anticipated. It's probably one. Using the wrong tool for the right job. But I probably got, you know, yay much, if you can even see that, out so far just by picking and prying and pulling. Um, regardless, I am just kind of shoving things up in here. And now I got the pry bar to where I can get actually get the pry bar in here a little bit and do some prying. But yet again, this is, you know, it's not really moving a whole lot at all. So I'm hoping there's not something biggerly wrong or more wrong I should say but I'm gonna keep yanking on it with this thing now again now that I got it kind of fried out a little bit more oh my goodness Freaking haw! All right. Nope. Oh, don't forget your washer there. But we gotta press this out. I have a Harbor Freight cheapy press and the hole that this goes down into is too small for uh, for the pinion to, to go through here. So I'm also going to put a rag down here so it gives but hopefully will drop not right onto the metal pieces and hurt something. That was actually fairly simple. So I found some square tubing. I was able to kind of pull it apart so that this will go through here. Um, yet again, this is not the correct way to do this, but it's what I got. Well, I have gone back to Harbor Freight, got their bigger clamshell bearing puller thing here and uh, we're going to try it out. There you go. Tube of course right as I reached under and it was about to drop I ran out of battery. Um, but as you can see it is no longer on there. I'm not seeing any pitting, any real wear of the bearing in this race and these bearings don't come with races now these are national bearings i got them at o'reilly's because they were budget and local these are actually from o'reilly's and they don't say it anywhere on here 
Um, they're just in a white generic box, but they actually say Timken made in USA right here. I, if I can figure it out, I will put prices below for the um, races and for the bearings. But here's my thing. I'm not going to use these races. I'm not, I don't want to deal with pulling these races out. And yet again, someday down the road when I replace all this, you'll get to see that video. But um, I just don't want to mess with it more than anything because I don't see a real need to do so. Um, these are just not in bad shape. What I'm about to say, you should listen very carefully. Do not put this on like this and put it on, because it's not the way it goes. Ask me how I know. Or go watch my good, bad, and ugly video, because it just got uglier. Um, regardless, I've cleaned this off now. I don't have lubricant on there. You don't want to lubricate these, because you want this part, the inner part here, to stick. You don't want it to be lubed on there. Once this is on, you do not want that part to move. Now, make sure your taper is going up, unlike I did. And then we are going to take this piece again here, although this might be the first time if you're watching just the regular video. And this here, and put it on there. And we're going to press this to go beyond. Next thing, I'm going to take a little bit of this, and I'm just going to put some on here. Yet again, I don't know if this is needed, if you even should do this, but quite honestly, I just don't want a dry start, so to speak, for these bearings. So I'm not packing them. I am just putting a nice little coat on here so that the you know, has a better chance of not getting messed up right off the bat. So, now we got that pressed on. And next, yet again, go watch my good, bad, and ugly. This one wasn't so bad. I was able to get this off. But I put this on and started pressing that uh, bearing in there and forgot. There is a crush sleeve that needs to go right on here. Go ahead and put this on. grease this bearing up a little bit here so here we are again we got the uh, bearing on here now we got the crush sleeve in there now now it is time to hopefully and finally push this thing together here All right. hopefully this is now where it needs to be Got my not US made Timken seal here that I am sort of reusing even though it's brand new and never used. But it has been put in. But I popped it out. Yet again, go watch my good, bad, and ugly video if that's not what you're watching right now. But because of that, and I am going to actually put a little bit of this on here purely because I screwed up and uh, had to pull this off and I just don't want any leaks the inside part should be fine this will probably this is probably really not needed but uh, I'm going to use it anyway It does. But I put duct tape around this so that hopefully, if it does decide to shatter, it won't shatter into many pieces. It'll usually they just crack. Um, I know I'm not first mechanic to use chrome sockets with an impact we'll put it that way All right. so here we are for the try ten zillion time I got a little bit of grease on the washer here I don't drop it first 
and put that up in there and quite honestly at six one half a dozen the other which one of these nuts I should use I probably should go buy another one but uh, I am going to put the orange permatex on here and uh, slap that on after I get some of the grease or yeah grease off of here and we're gonna run this will be in here all right so i got set up now i probably should have done that a little bit sooner but uh now we're gonna drive this in here all right that feels we don't have any in and out movement but it's turning all right now we're just to the point where it's not messed up here hopefully we are going to put our glasses on and uh, stick this in here and see where we're at and we are only a couple of pounds now with so for new bearings i need to tighten this to 25 to 35 foot pounds for reused bearings 5 to 15 I put new bearings in here so we're going to aim for 25 between 25 and 35 I'm going to knock this thing in a little bit more and try not to go too far I got one more shot if I do but try not to still not really registering too much on here now here's the other thing I got you know a pretty big setup here which is probably gonna mess up some of that torque but it is what it is just gonna go a little bit at a time if it turns I'm going to turn it a tiny bit and do it again until I get it right, hopefully. Quite honestly, you don't even see me do that and then test and do that and then test. That's my plan. Go just, you know, a minute turn and test it until I hopefully get it right. When I get to that point or I screw up again, I'll be back. Well, remember I said when I'd be back after screwing up? That was the very last thing I just said to you. I went to check it, and we are at about, eh, we're at 30 to, we're right at the top of 30. Pushing a little bit more than 30. I'm calling it. So I've taken brake clean and cleaned this up as good as I can. Um, now we got the metal shim here. I'm going to try and find the flattest, least damaged part on it. And I got my caliper here. I'm going to turn on. And I'm going to put it in millimeters because it's actually easier to read sometimes. We'll see where we end up at. But. And then I'm going to take that and uh, put that in there. 0 0.28 millimeters 0 0.28 millimeters 0 0.27 millimeters so if I get real close to one of these it's pretty flat yeah that's messed up so 0 0.27 so if I find so 0 0.27 I gotta remember that and the second one out of the box, you won't be able to see it probably, but 026, 026, 027, 027. So this looks to be appears to be the one that I want here. So, so we're going to go ahead and start with this one up here. Now, there, one side of it has a little tang thing sticking out here. That faces towards the passenger side. 
as if you're sitting in the truck um, or I should say right hand side for those of you who actually do measure in metric some of you uh, so we got our pinion here uh, and pinion assembly I would call it anyway and we got our shim now on this pinion there is a flattened side that's not machined real well all the rest of them have kind of rounded sides all the way around that flat side goes to the right hand side or passenger side of the vehicle and then we got our shim the shim this little bump out here hopefully you can see that goes in that same spot now i have also in testing this the shim goes a specific direction so uh, if the holes aren't lining up correctly you might need to flip it around so because i had to do that at least on mine yet again this is important to get this correct because there's an oiling passageway up here that coincides with oiling passageways in this pinion assembly here so I'm going to take it and I'm going to stick it in. Now this nub right here needs to go into where that uh, pinion bearing in the inside is. I'm going to go on the other side and kind of take a look and make sure things are lining up the way I'm hoping they are. And then I will probably have to back bash this in a little bit with a hammer. This is the casting, got to be careful when you're doing this stuff. Well, that sucked that in pretty nicely. So according to that Bella Vista website, uh, the pinion retainer, which I believe this is what this is, is 65 foot-pounds. Um, it also talks about the pinion and one other thing, and I couldn't tell which one it was. Uh, but it talked about 65 foot-pounds, so we're going to go with 65 foot-pounds here. And I uh, hope my torque wrench is accurate enough. And I may have already overdone it. I got these kind of backed out and just in by hand. And now we're going to try it and tighten them to 65 foot pounds. And see what happens. We are good. Well, YouTube, thanks for making it this far if you did. Here is the price total of things and uh, kind of the list of things that I had to do to make this video happen and because uh, I know there's gonna be people out there that are gonna be like oh all these tools are so much money you can just bring it somewhere and get it done well I went to a, a four-wheel drive shop uh, near me and actually asked him if I bring that rear end that meant taking the rear end out of my truck bringing it to him not the whole truck because I couldn't bring the whole truck I guess I maybe could have towed it there but he, he wanted just the rear end Taking the rear end out of my truck, getting it to him, would have cost me $1,800. Now that would have probably counted a brand new ring and pinion, all new parts and pieces, um, as far as the ring and pinion stuff and bearings and all that stuff. Um, on that note, I asked him, okay, if I give you this pinion set up here, this, the, the, what we just did the video on, what would it cost if I just had you set this, just this part of it up to the 35 inch pounds or whatever? I, I didn't know it at the time, but set it up the way it needs to be set up using my parts. Now, when he set it up, he probably would have called me and said, you need new bearings, because that's what I decided is the bearings were definitely not good. Um, but hopefully he would have called and told me that. But 
he would have done that and didn't really want to, but would have done it for like $800 um, and no guarantees whatsoever. I could have stuck it in, it could have broke, and that would have been it. No guarantees. So $800 minimum for me to have somebody help me out or do the entire project for $1,800. So, on top of all that, the parts I bought, all the, the bearings and all that, not counting that I did a couple of them twice. You may have to throw in a few extra bucks if you end up screwing up like I did and having to do a couple things twice. But if you get it all right, um, the just parts was $136.06 um, in parts. Now you're saying, well, you got all the tools and all that and blah, blah, blah. Those cost a lot of money. And yes, they do. All the tools that I used in this, I, I marked it below. If you, if you watch the video all the way through, I put prices on the tools. Uh, I didn't count the half-inch breaker bar. $9.99 at Harbor Freight on sale all the time. I don't know what their regular price is, so I add 10 bucks to this list at the end. But for all the tools, including the knocker, my impact gun, the new one I just bought, um, Everything I use, the torque wrenches, the I didn't do the inch pound wrench, forgot that one, so add another ten bucks. I got that at a garage sale for I think five bucks, but I'm sure you can find that for ten between ten and fifteen, maybe twenty dollars. So add that in as well. Regardless, um, we're gonna go with what I have here because I have it here and I need to get this done. All my tools all together that I spent would have spent if I bought them brand new by the way was 776.03. So that's for this part of it here. Now on top of this you are going to have to buy some stuff to do the backlash and check your uh, you know tolerances and things like that. Um, but quite honestly I'll talk about those in those videos and they're not that expensive. So um, keep that in mind too that if you decide to tackle this job there are a few more tools you're going to need to finish the job. Um, yet again, go watch those videos. I'm going to probably have like four or five videos just on this rear end alone. Um, at some point I might mesh them together. We'll see uh, what happens. But uh, regardless, go watch those if you want to see the rest of this. And I didn't spend near that much on all these tools because I bought most of them at pawn shops or on sale at Harbor Freight. These are actual the top prices at Harbor Freight, not sell prices. So um, if you go to Harbor Freight and just buy the tool, don't wait for it to be on sale. Uh, 7603, the knocker system you might be interested in. I use that tool for a lot of stuff more than trying to pull dents out. It's not just a dent puller. Um, that was 151 on Amazon for an entire kit, very similar to mine. Now quality, can't I can't tell you that's a that was an expensive one that I got really cheap at a pawn shop a hundred years ago but beside the point so my entire total what I would have spent if I went out and bought all the tools all the parts and all the pieces would be 77603 plus 10 so 78603 let's call it eight hundred dollars um, all said and done which I don't think you'd have that much into it if you shopped well but let's call it $800 so I could have maybe taken that part in and not done this video and saved me a little bit of trouble but what happens when I need to do it again I don't have the tools I don't have the knowledge now I feel like I can do this again so I'm okay spending the $800 on parts and tools to get a job done. Now I actually already had the tools obviously so I didn't spend that much but I did buy that impact gun for this job because um, I knew I was going to need more oomph than my air impact would do. So this is going on way too long. It was a lot less than $1,800 maybe cost the $800 if you could find somebody to actually do that for you and I doubt it would have cost only 800 bucks it probably would have cost me more in the end um, so I feel like I got a good deal I feel like if you want to take the chance and try and do this and uh, you're gonna have 800 bucks involved if you have no tools in your garage now I didn't count screwdrivers or wrenches <coughs> or sockets those are things that every homeowner should have if he's doing anything on his car so I didn't count those things well I'm not done with this yet so I need to get back to it let's finish this video
All right. Well, I think that we officially have hit the end of this video, finally. Um, yet again, depending on what video you're watching, uh, if it's the shortest one, then it was much harder than it looked. <laughs> Not that anything here was really hard. It just, uh, it just, it takes knowledge that I didn't have until now kind of thing. Now that I've done it, I've had knowledge. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Um, and, uh, this was my first time doing this kind of thing. And really... Yet again, if I knew and had, I guess, information that was a little bit more across the board the same, uh, it would make life easier, but really there just isn't. So, so now that we got this all set up in here, I need to do the backlash. I'm definitely going to do that in a different video, because um, this is kind of what you need to know to get this into this point. You're going to have to do that part of it as well, but th this video is going to go on way too long no matter which one you're watching anyway and uh i'm gonna separate them maybe someday i'll put them all together in one big long video if you would like to watch all that um if you want to watch a, a long video and if you like watching other people's misery and suffering mm -hmm. um well first of all you're sick second of all i can understand Third of all, uh, go watch my good, bad, and extremely ugly video that I will be doing on this right here. Um, I hope people go watch that one because it, it took a lot to make it. Um, so, there is no reason any longer to keep going on this. We're going to call that a video. Hopefully somebody got something out of that and you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching Junk Works Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all and I am obviously master none. You all have a good one.